Cornerstone Church. It's Monday, and I believe this is right in the middle, about day 15 of the the 30-day quarantine that Governor Sisolak, the governor of Nevada, asked us to participate in. So I think we're halfway through this period. We'll see what happens in the future. Things change every day. But what doesn't change, though, and this is kind of a lead-in, what doesn't change is the Word of God. God has given us His Word to know Him. Reading the Bible and studying it isn't just about information. It's not about checking off a a self-righteous checklist that you say, I did that, so I'm good. No, it's about pursuing the living God. He has given us his word. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us a living and active word. That's how we know God. So let's look at Colossians chapter 1, the end. It's an interesting passage. The very last few verses of this chapter drive my ministry. It has for years. And let, let me read that to you. Paul says this, Christ we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. You see, Paul traveled the Mediterranean world leading people to Jesus, but it just wasn't getting them saved that drove Paul. You see, it just wasn't getting them to say a prayer of repentance and faith. What drove Paul was to minister to these people, these churches, so someday he'll be able to present them all mature in Christ. I think that's at that second coming of Christ or when Paul had died. He wanted to know he did all he could to present people mature in Christ. That's why the next verse, verse 29, for this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. That's Paul's passion. You wanna see the heart of Paul's passion? Go to 2 Corinthians 11 and see there how much he suffered to accomplish this. We back up a few verses and it talks about a very key passage, a very key phrase I want you to understand today. And that is the concept that Christ is in you. This is very important. Christ is in you. He lives in you. And this is what Paul calls a mystery that was hidden from previous generations, but now it's been made known. And here it is. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. And what is this mystery? That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is unbelievable. Jesus Christ lives in you. And the fact that he is in you is when Paul moves on now to say, And my goal is to see you presented mature in Christ. Christ is in you. He's working in you to accomplish his purposes, to develop his character. We see in scripture that all things are happening so that Christ's image and likeness will be developed in us. We will be made like him in all our thoughts, all our actions, all our motives. This is an ongoing process for our entire life until someday we stand before him holy and blameless. We've talked about that a lot lately. So this passage drives me. Both personally, I want Christ formed in me. Galatians 4.19, that's what Paul says to the Galatians. They've fallen from grace. And he says to them, I'm in labor again until Christ is formed in you. Same thing he's mentioning here in Colossians. So do you see evidence of Christ in you? Do you see Christ's character, Christ's heart, Christ's passion developed in you? Are you thinking the thoughts of Christ? Do you have the same concerns that he has? Is your relationship with Christ asking him, God, here's what you can do for me? Or is your prayers, God, make me like your son. Help me to see the world as he does, to love the world as he does. That's what it means for Christ to be in you, for Christ to be in me. Paul brings a sobering challenge to us in 2 Corinthians regarding Christ in you and seeing the fact or recognizing the fact that you are growing to be like him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, the end of the book, Paul says this to the Corinthians. Examine, so I say to you and I say to me. Paul says, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. See, he didn't just want the Corinthians to presume that they were in the faith. He wanted to examine themselves. Test yourself. Or do you not realize this about yourself? that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test. This is sobering. We need to ask the question, God, the test I believe would go before God. God, show me evidence that Christ is in me. I just don't want to point back to several years ago, and for me it was 40, that I said a prayer of repentance and faith. I want to know today Is there evidence that I am growing into Christ's likeness, that he is in me, forming his character in me every day? 
Talk to God about it today. Do you see the love of Christ in you? Do you see the patience of Christ in you? Do you see the holiness of Christ in you? I'm not talking perfection. I am talking growth. There's an analogy I've always used. You know, it's the old Robert Plant song, Stairway to Heaven. I know it's the wrong thing to bring up in a, a devotion about following Jesus, but the idea of a stairway to heaven, if heaven represents that perfection in Christ-likeness, every day of my life I need to be coming up this stairway and becoming like him. Some days I take three steps up, the next day two steps back. But do I see a progression in my life where I'm becoming more and more like Jesus, where, where sin is becoming having less hold on me and having more and more love for God's people and the lost? That's what it means to have Christ formed in you. Talk to him today about it. And thanks for listening. We'll talk again tomorrow from Colossians chapter 2.